how to zen a backyard. We're gonna to talk to you all about a peaceful backyard oasis, a peaceful zen space. It's done with planting, it's done with destination, it's done with hard surface. We're gonna to talk to you all about a backyard zen space right now, enjoy. I want you to feel the peace as you walk into the space. So you walk outside, maybe you take a couple of steps down from your back door, but I want you to enter into a new space. And it's done with planting, it's done with patio, it's done with creating the environment around your space. Look at what we've done here. The bamboo, the planting are the heart of this backyard. They are what gives the life and the zen of the space. But look at what we did with the patio and then the pathway to another secondary destination. Now the destination that we created in this space is a covered hot tub area. Is there anything more zen than sitting in the hot tub on a cold day and just letting the, the cares of the day melt away? You're in that zen environment. So you have the hot tub destination as your main pool. That's your destination. But you're creating that through taking a couple steps, taking a little meander through your garden. Think of all of the peace that you're getting as you're going into your Zen area, your hot tub destination. And as you get in your hot tub, you just let the cares melt away. You're in your space, you're, you're in your Zen environment. Now, as you're entering your Zen environment, and I love this because once you step outside and you see the pathway over, that pathway is gonna pull you out further. Look at what we did with the different elements here. We used fire, we used water, and we used earth planting around to create that peaceful environment that just makes you wanna come outside and stay outside. And that is the beauty of creating a Zen garden, is create destinations, create reasons to go out, but once you're out there, you don't even wanna think about the cares of the day or the stress that you're going through. You just wanna melt away and have that zen or letting that peace come to you. Now we did this with a fire pit. Now a fire pit could be used all by yourself. It could be used as a family, but that's just gonna give you that relaxing uh, kind of memory building or just taking the time all by yourself. But a couple of steps down through that pathway. And I want you to remember this, a pathway creates kind of a meander through the garden and that's just gonna help you kind of let the cares of the day melt away, it really will. Each step almost, and as you go down, that symbolizes just letting things go. And look at the destination that we created here. This is a hot tub area. So it's a covered hot tub area, covered hot tub destination. And how much peace does a hot tub create? I mean, this is nationally known. One of the wonders of the world is like the Blue Lagoon. It's a place for you to be able to go and relax in nature. And that's what a hot tub does in your very own backyard. So create that little hot tub destination, a little uh, zen area for you to go, recenter and enjoy that time. Let's hear from the homeowners of some of their highlights as they were thinking through, and then as we were designing the space for them, let's hear some of their highlights of what it's like for them in their Zen environment. First moved into our home, all of the backyard here was just clay on clay. And we saw the space and we immediately knew we wanted some sort of a structure and we wanted a hot tub underneath it. So we kind of started doing our perimeter planning, but it was always in our, in our mind's eye to have it done. And then we just got to a point where we started like envisioning like, wow, wouldn't it be cool to have like a two tiered setup with a hot tub and a structure and lighting. And, and then it just kind of, I don't know, it just kind of grew from that point. Now I love that the homeowner mentioned this, a key aspect to zenning your backyard. It starts with the vision. So look at what the backyard looked like. It's a typical backyard in many, many neighborhoods planting on the borders, you had the lawn in the middle, you had a, maybe a gravel pathway on the side, but pretty much that's all you had, a concrete patio, and then the rest is just done by a builder. But look at the way we created the Zen garden. There's no lawn, and there's purpose in every space. And as you're creating your Zen garden, 
create it in zones. What are you going to do in each zone? We have the fire pit zone over by the bamboo. Now the fire pit is going to create a destination. It's going to get you out there, usually in the evening hours. But just the seating out there, even if the fire pit's not on, you are going to go out there and just take in the nature of the space. You're going to see that from a window. You're going to kind of want to go outside and take in the day. And you're going to be drawn to this space because of the Zen area that you've created. Now, the amazing thing is, is that once you're out there, you're going to be pulled to the next space. The stairs are naturally set up for that. So you're going to be pulled, even if you're not in the hot tub, you're going to want to meander over there. The covered structure is mainly for the hot tub. Even if you're not in the hot tub or taking a hot tub, you're going to meander over there. The stairs draw you out to do that, taking in the nature, connecting with nature, and letting that peace overtake you. And that's the beauty of these Zen spaces. No lawn, no heavy maintenance. It's about enjoying and connecting with the space. Think of the flow of water. Think of the peace. Imagine a Zen garden for centuries has been used for people to be able to go and just relax. So try to get at least three different spaces. Try to separate them a little bit far apart. The relaxing zone right outside of your house. We have the green egg in this situation, little cook space. A couple of steps further, you enter the new zone, the zone of the fire pit. And then you're pulled out further to the hot tub and covered structure. And then the pathway along the side, it keeps you meandering over to the front yard where we have a nice little sitting area up front as a nice little greeter to whoever comes over. Of course, in the evening hours, we have the lighting. The lighting's gonna draw you out. I would always recommend lighting for your Zen backyard space, especially as you're moving from one zone to the next zone. You need to take in the evening hours with the lighted space. Now, with your Zen garden, it is so important to have space to go, destinations, purpose to your Zen garden. But it's critical, too, to have your planting proper. Let's listen to the client here as they explain some of the planting in their backyard, especially the bamboo, to give you a little bit of the education on how to take your Zen garden to the next level with the planting portion. It's called moso. Yeah, it's Phyllostachys um, edulis, and the cultivar is moso. And moso means fur, so they actually have like a belt. They're pretty cool. They're great though. They're only about six inches deep, so they're a very shallow rhizome, which makes it really controllable. We, yeah. So, so anybody's like, bamboo is invasive, evil bamboo. It's not. <laughs> it's only so six inches deep. With bamboo, there's <laughs> running and clumping, and so it's considered a runner, and the runner is the invasive one, but this this is almost like an exception to the rule with runners because of what she just said the high rhizome so we, we kind of trench you can kind of see it we almost trenched behind it and in front of it uh because we're able to see the rhizome yeah, because they sit up so high the rhizome and, pops out of the trench and then you just and as, off, as long as you cut them again from yeah. that point and this so bam this bamboo right now is i think it's about 15 20 feet we bought it at what 15 years old so it's maybe yeah. getting to 20 years old. Full grown, they, they make furniture on this bamboo. That this is, it's a timber. And you can eat it. And it's edible. <laughs> and they get uh, eight inch uh, combs yeah. or, or, or In, shoots. Uh, about 70 to 80 feet. And it will get to 70 or 80 feet. Now I say this on every video, but I'm gonna stress it in this video because in a small space, it is absolutely imperative for you to get a design. If you do something wrong, you are gonna pay the price and it's gonna be basically having to rip everything out. So get a 3D design, we design in 3D. In fact, listen to this homeowner and the value that they saw in a 3D design. They actually got a design from a different company at their previous house and it was only in 2D. So it wasn't until they realized that 3D was out there and they hired us to do it. But listen to them, I'll let you hear it from their own words. And when I, what I saw in house, I was like, 
oh my gosh, this is beautiful. Like the work was impeccable and we got a bid from a different company prior to that. Oh gosh. And it, the, the rendering was just subpar. He got a 2D design from the other company, all Hi. black and white. And I mean, she really, she paid attention to like every detail. Like one thing we wanted was for the structure to oh. emulate our front porch with the columns. Yeah. Yeah, so that it so would look copied like it, was it built you know. originally by the builder, which I think they did a great job. It looks like I don't know when you see it in the front, like it that. has the same exact design. And honestly, it kind of saddens us a little bit. There's nothing else to do. Like, what are we gonna do now? Like, we need a new project, you know? <laughs> but um, no, I mean, I the finish, the finish. You know, I am so happy with it. And